Rise and shine, we've got to get up early. I'm just joking. <laughs> Day three of Thailand, we woke up naturally and calmly packed our stuff into the car because we were about to go on a road trip across Thailand, making our way to Buriram, which is an area about four hours drive away from Bangkok. So I was excited to go on a road trip. We had barely been driving for 10 minutes when I started seeing McDonald's signs everywhere. And I begged my friend to let me go because I know that McDonald's change up their menus depending on which country you're in. And I wasn't sure if Thailand had any special things. My friend agreed to come and we pulled up to the most bougie looking McDonald's I've ever seen in my life. It was so clean and they had a, an outdoor patio. I found it quite cool because they still had the old mascot sitting outside on the bench so I joined him for a while. To be fair, the standard burger, fries, McFlurry kind of a thing was pretty similar in Thailand to what it is in Europe. Apart from, it was way easier to find chicken and pork burgers than it was to find beef. I guess the kind of standard snack to go for would also be a corn or pineapple pie but unfortunately there was a waiting time on if we wanted to order them and we didn't have the time to wait but I did want to get something which I've never seen in McDonald's before so I opted for a porridge. I could choose whether this porridge came with pork or chicken so I decided to go with chicken and when I got it I expected it to be kind of oaty but it turned out to be a kind of rice goo which actually tasted pretty good. I got some fries as well and instead of going for the normal ketchup or mayo I decided to go for plum sauce which was actually divine it was so good it was like chutney but not quite as strong as you can imagine after that I was pretty full and I fell asleep pretty much immediately and the next time I woke up we were at the most beautiful service station that I've ever seen in my whole life I saw some flowers of course I had to take a picture then we walked through the tiniest museum it was just one room and out onto this beautiful walkway with a view over this lake and not gonna lie I'm not entirely sure where we were but it was beautiful there were a few foods stalls here and there and I noticed that they had walkers crisps. Obviously we all know in most other countries walkers is called lays but I did find the way that Thai people wrote lays to be particularly interesting because it was recognisable to a European but obviously it's quite different to what we're used to. We quickly used the loo, snagged ourselves a coconut and then we were on our way. The next time I woke up we were pulling into a really nice place with lanterns hanging across the driveway. We basically just stopped for a pee break and a milkshake and then then we were off on our way again but I saw some flowers. Before I knew it we were pulling up to our destination which was a building site because basically my friend is building a house and we were there to overlook the whole process. Obviously as you can see this house is not quite ready to sleep in yet so we put up some tents and made ourselves a little campsite. My home, my village, I was actually so looking forward to camping here because I like camping anyway but I'm used to English weather which can be kind of freezing and also rains a lot whereas you don't really have to worry about either of those things in Thailand so I was super excited to camp here. Not to mention we had toilet facilities and electricity which is kind of luxury when you're camping. Anyway a while after we put the tent up it started to get dark and went to sleep. I woke up the next day good morning guys and this man with his pickup truck literally full of freshly cooked foods pulls up at our campsite and sells us breakfast on the menu that day was sticky rice and pork skewers which was actually amazing shortly after we'd finished eating breakfast my friend's aunt came over and we climbed up to the top floor of my friend's new house and we took part in a ceremony inviting all of my friends friends and family who had passed away to come and join us at the house we lit some incense sticks and offered food and drink and after a while of greeting them all we tied thread bracelets around each other's wrists and wished each other good wishes for example good health and happiness and all our sadness and suffering to be gone then the walls were blessed and the ceremony was over. After the ceremony, we got a campfire going and had breakfast part two. We had managed to get our hands on these pyramids of rice, egg and beans wrapped in leaves and we were cooking them and they were delicious and fresh sweet corn, of course. Day four was quite a chill day and we did a lot of lounging around. I read a lot of my book, but in the afternoon, we needed to run some errands. So we hopped in a pickup truck and got going. On the way to the hardware store, we stopped off at my friend's aunt's house and she had been growing some interesting fruits in the garden. We picked up some sweetened banana chips which were actually amazing and headed off on our way. One thing about Thailand is that as soon as you get outside of the city there are just cows everywhere walking from field to field not really caring if you're a car trying to get past. 
And on our mission trying to drive down this road, we also got passed by some buffaloes. The traffic lights had a countdown, both with the red and the green lights. Wearing seatbelts is not really a thing. The only reason why someone would put a seatbelt on is if they have a modern car which beeps at them until they do it. I feel like this video is a perfect example of the lack of health and safety regulations when it comes to wearing seatbelts in Thailand. To be fair though, all jokes aside, it must be quite chill up there, with the wind in your hair. We arrived at the hardware store and my friend got looking at the different planks to see which one would be perfect for her house, whereas I on the other hand was fascinated by these plants which, when you touch them, closed up. I just couldn't get enough of them and I had to touch all of them. We saw these plants, which I found fascinating because they looked like plants growing on plants, when in fact it was just plants. Outside the hardware store we found a coconut store and they cut and prepared the coconuts fresh. Coming from Europe, I've only ever seen coconuts brown, kinda hairy and hard, so I was surprised when he started carving this big, green, fresh looking coconut. And then it was time to go home for some more lazing around the campsite and trying not to get a sunburn. On the way back home we decided to visit our neighbour and some of the goats had kids. They were so adorable. And the owner let us feed them, although I was not an expert. I started feeding the kid as if it was a human baby, not wanting to lift the bottle too high because I was scared that it would choke. But if you think about it, a kid would drink from its mother's udders, which would be directly above them. So actually holding the bottle high was the best I could do. In the evening, we made our way to a local restaurant, which was really cool because all of the tables had holes in, which were there to hold buckets of flaming coal, over which a hot pot would be placed. And these were really interesting. They were metal circular deep pans where you could put broth inside and boil your vegetables, but the pan would rise up in the middle above the water level so that you could also fry meats at the top. We had squid, prawns, mushrooms, other vegetables, which I'm not sure if I can name, but they were very nice. After that, I headed to the toilet quickly before we went home and I was greeted by a load of lizards just chilling on the walls. Anyway, after this I was really full and really tired so we went back to the campsite. To be fair, there's not much we can really do there in the dark anyway and I went to sleep. I hope you enjoyed part two of my Thailand adventure. Anyway, I'm Jess. Bye!